Happy Fantasy Draft Friday to everyone in the sports universe. I am your host, Michael Carvelis. And, and well, I keep saying that. I'm your co host, Michael Carvelis, alongside Aaron Crouch. This is the AM Drive. Hi, Aaron, the other guy on the show. Um, it is Friday, March 24th, 2023. Aaron, how was your week? So, how was your week, your work week? How about that? Uh, the work week's been good. I actually, uh, I actually moved into a different role uh, starting, Ooh. it's a little bit earlier for me, which um, I don't know if people would know back in the day, I used to work this shift and now I'm kind of back on it. Uh, I have to get adjusted to life, getting up earlier now and having to, you know, feed the baby before I go to work. It's a little different now. So taking the week to get adjusted. I was going to make a breastfeeding joke there, but I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> I would so have to. Bad. What do you say? I would have to use yours first. You got a good supply. I'm I'm, I'm up there. Um, MikeAndAaronDrive.com, our shop sponsors, socials, and YouTube in one beautiful place. I want to first start the show by saying that Willis Reed died 80 years old. When I, when I first saw the name, I was like, is that a current player? I was like, oh, he's the he won two championships with the New York Knicks Mr. in the Nick. 90s and was called the captain. Of course, everyone's called the captain, for crying out loud. And he also won two finals MVPs, so pretty big deal. Yes, absolutely. I think we should take five seconds uh, of silence to, to kind of show our appreciation here on the show for, for the captain, Willis Reed. Hats off. I can never get through that without smirking at you because it's just so funny seeing your head. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Willis Reed. Huh? Let's say the same about your face. No. Um, Japan beat USA in an epic World Baseball Classic final. It is funny how I've come around on this thing. I know you were trying to sell it to us, the people, for a, a while. And I don't know if the people were buying in, but when I saw – I, I heard that Japan won. I was like, okay, cool. Then I saw the Shohei Otani struck out Mike Trout to win the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that's theater. That's why we love sports. I love it. I, I know Mike Trout can only, you know, be down, but he had to feel a little bit of moral victories there, correct? Mm, I don't know if there is. I mean, <laughs> he, he probably had a little fun with it, but, you know, I will say this. You know, you got Shohei Otani, um, and you have Mike Trout in an epic, you know, thriller to end the World Baseball Classic. I mean, imagine if those guys were on the same team. I can imagine how good they – oh, wait. Oh, wait. It's the other 23 guys on the team. Oh. Um, no, it, this was this was absolutely incredible. Like I, I had kind of lost track and I'll be I'll, I'll admit I understand why people don't care and I understand why people don't think this is is relevant or exciting and uh, I lost track of it for in, in between there actually when Japan was winning their title. I think they won one in 09 and one in 13 and this is their third one and US was the defending champion so they were looking to go back to back and it was you know, it, it just made for, like you said, fun theater. And, and those two people, of all people, to be facing off at the end of the game with something on the line there, One you know, one. the championship, and, and to, to strike out, it's uh, it's it's demoralizing for the U.S., but it's still good for baseball. And you just have to wonder, loud. now, I'll ask you this question, and, you know, I'll give my answer afterwards, but, I mean, you have to wonder, like, the legend of Shohei, like, is he the greatest player ever? Skip Bayless. This, I'm glad you said that because I, I, I want to use my answer by saying this. Skip Bayless, who's been around forever, did say he might be better than Babe Ruth. And that's huge coming from that guy. So you, what, what, what do you think? So, like I said, you know me. I'm an accomplishment guy, especially when we have our LeBron Mike talks and, and our Brady talks. I'm an accomplishment guy. And I know, you know, team sports, shmeme sports. But, you know, to me – I know that theoretically Shohei Otani with what he does on a baseball field should be the MVP every year. We talk about this, like LeBron, you know, Michael Jordan, these guys should be MVP every year because of the value to their team, but he can't get his team to the playoffs at bat or on the mound. So to me, I, I know that a lot of people are, are saying that goat thing. Yeah, he is a phenomenal talent and he will continue to be, I think he's 28 years old. He'll continue to be for at least I would say seven more years. 
But no, I don't think he's the greatest ever, but I think he is incredibly fun to watch. I'm glad he's on the West Coast right now to be able to see him because I, I, you know, I watch a lot of late baseball, even though my favorite team plays at four o'clock every day, most of the time. Huh. Uh, you know, so, <laughs> uh, but he's exciting to watch. If he does, decides to move on from the Angels, I hope he stays on the West Coast, maybe with the Dodgers. Um, but no, is he the greatest baseball player of all time? No, not yet. Maybe. Most talented? Yes. Okay, I like that. I'll take because that. And do. Now, the question is, is if if you actually committed to letting pitchers hit. Now, there's been some pitchers who can hit the ball. Max Scherzer can hit. Madison, yeah. Madison Bumgarner can hit. Can they hit like Shohei? I don't know. We never found out. So, I mean, maybe we're looking at an era where more, you know, commitment from, pit, you know, from these guys. Like, when I was playing high school baseball, our pitchers hit. You know, we had pitchers who could rake. We had safeties who were going to play wide receiver. Come yeah, on. Double dipped because of one reason or another, because of your talent, because of, you know, the school needs you to play both sides, you know. Um, you kind of lose that in college. And then obviously in with the addition of, of the universal DH, we're going to pretty much lose that in, in the ML, MLB too. But hopefully oh. we see some of these guys, these pitchers who come up through the ranks and can rake, maybe they're DHing on some days, you know, you never know. So I don't know. Maybe we could, like Steph started an era of three-point shooting, you know, changes. For better or worse. Yeah, for better or worse. Maybe Shohei starts an era where pitchers are, are swinging the bat a little bit better in this era. So I don't know. It could be – for the good, it could be for the bad, but I think Shohei Otani might be changing the game now. I love that he has personality. I'm just saying, I, he needs one. He, he had a little, I, he's got it. That's what I'm he, saying. I like that he has one. He had a little bit, it, it needs to come out. And of course, the MLB does themselves no favors by not marketing these guys well enough, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Well, in your opinion, oh, I wonder that's that's a bold opinion, Aaron. Well, I can only speak for myself, so. <laughs> He speaks for the people. Aaron's a man of the people. I and try. I am too, but you yeah. Okay. Um, Sweet 16 on um, Thursday. That was yesterday in Elite Eight preview, by the way. Le yesterday, Kansas State beat Tom Izzo in overtime. I call him Tom Izzo because they're not Michigan State to me. <laughs> the fight um, yeah. UConn beat what I thought Arkansas could actually win the game. UConn said, dang all that. Yep. Dang all that. Because uh, remember, Arkansas like was contending with Alabama, I believe, at some points this season. Mm -hmm. And so UConn said, hey, we got a date with hate, pal. They're going to play Gonzaga because Gonzaga won a thriller against UCLA. I thought that was could be a championship preview. I know people were saying about Gonzaga. Gonzaga's got a little Cinderella in him this year. I know that was the whole memo before the season started. Like when, before the tournament started, with them being a lower seed, this team's got some guys that that, that like give a crap. I mean, everyone gives a crap. Oh, you know what else gives a crap? FAU beat Tennessee. What the heck is this? In no sport does that make sense. You know, I say this every year, and I'll continue to say this: the the NCAA tournament makes the most compelling argument for college football to expand to sixteen teams. It makes sure. every year like, hey, yeah, you know what? Sometimes. You put FAU and Tennessee in a gym and they play 100 times, Tennessee's probably going to win 90 of them. But you know what? Those 10 times, FAU keeps on dancing. And you know what? They go against Kansas State. Kansas State will probably beat them. But you know what? FAU, these teams have no fear. They play with house money. I love to see it. We have another one tomorrow or today with Princeton against Creighton, the 15th seed. I right? love that matchup. Yeah, I mean, they have no fear. I mean, we've got all our, our, our big-time matchups. Alabama's going, to, uh, you know, tonight. Uh, I mean, the state's a good matchup, man. Yeah, Texas and Xavier, Houston and Miami. But like, you're right. Like, I mean, I love. I, I'm going to love this UConn Gonzaga matchup. But God forbid, like, like you said, you know, what if we get FAU versus uh, Princeton on one half of the Final Four? I mean, come on, let's go. And you, no one had Kansas State or FAU. I'm sure, by in the Final Four before the season, and one of those teams is going to be in the Final Four, like guaranteed. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, we got, you know, that, you know, you got the, those two teams and then you have, like I said, Princeton has a shot. Uh, I don't think anybody's getting out of that bracket uh, past Alabama, but we'll see, you know, Alabama's Maybe. against San Diego state. The white kids from Princeton might have a thought in mind. Well, they got to get past the white kids from Omaha, Nebraska first. That's right. <laughs> 
you but know, another white kid. Hey, great compelling yeah. argument. Yeah, most yeah. most years we do get a lot of chalk, and we still have some chalk, but we have these fun teams that make a run, you know, Cinderella stories, you know, like, Cinderella. you know, we weren't supposed to be here, make the big dance. And and, I, and I'm only talking about maybe 16 teams in the in the playoff. We don't need 64 football teams. That's <laughs> 16 teams. With an eight, eight, uh, with an eight game season, I, I would take 16. I would take 64. Just saying. No. Oh, well, yeah. If you're only playing yeah, eight regular season, if you All just right. play and then just kind of made a bracket out of that, but just my point here is, is just every year I, I say this is the most compelling argument, and it's the NCAA who puts it on. It's just fantastic. I love it. I love how different it is from the NBA, too. Like, college like, does this great thing in the NBA and the NFL where it's like it's the sport is so much different than, than its father. It's, it's really awesome. You could say – you could argue, like, the kid is more energetic and more – because I always I feel like a, a college football game, the fans are just way more into it than an NFL game. Well, they're also rabid kids that have a lot of pride on their skin. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You know, the, the kid is way more energetic than the dad. And, and yeah, that Sorry, makes Aaron. college basketball and college and college football too. Fair. We'll be right back. How about a 30 second break? Drink some water, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back here to the Fantasy Draft Friday edition of the AM Drive. We are presented by Fanatics. You see it right there, Fanatics. And there's only one place you got to go to get all the best gear for all your favorite sports teams. It is Fanatics, but there's a simple twist. You see this right here, MikeAndAaronDrive.com. You need to go there first and click the F, click the Fanatics logo, because then it takes you into the Fanatics shop. You can shop to your heart's content. Playoffs are coming up for basketball and hockey. Football is, of course, a year-round sport. We've got college basketball. We're going to crown a champion here in the next two weeks or so. And you can do all of that, MikeAndAaronDrive.com, Fanatics. It helps out this show specifically. And for that, obviously, we thank you. They've got tons of deals, free shipping, 25 35 55 up to 65% off your orders sometimes. So make sure that you hit up MikeAndAaronDrive.com and click that F. I'm on it right now. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was mocking you. Though. I was doing the thing the whole time. Me too. I'm uh, on it on my beeper. <laughs> that's right. Do you even know what a beeper is? I've heard of them. I, I never saw it, though. I've heard of them. God, I feel old. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's bad. You have a kid. Ugh. All those dads out there. Hey, you're making dad jokes. Now you can actually make them. That's great. I need, You know what? I need to buy my first pair of uh, Air Monarchs. That's what I need to do. Air what? But, have you not heard of the Air Monarchs? They're like the official dad shoe. Wow. Just Google Air their Nike Air Monarchs and and like Google Nike Air Monarchs dad and just just enjoy. I'll do that while you're talking about this first. Um too soon, John Morant returns to the lineup. Um there were people that were not happy with this, rightfully so. And I want to get the I want to say the first people that I saw that weren't happy, Jay Williams, who knows a thing or two about bad stuff off the field in court. Wow. And Stephen A. Smith, I'm sorry. And Stephen A. Smith, they both said eight days is not going to do it. Like, they basically did the, the, the whole thing was a PR move, which again goes back to what I said. The Grizzlies are look like a scummy organization right now. Those grit and grind for years of professionalism and just playing the right way and playing good, good, hard basketball, they're done. They like the, lack of a better word, the thug era. That's all I can say. John Rant's a great player. But you pretend that he's not doing something to his career and that it's just a race issue. People need to pay attention to this a lot more. Because threatening a kid with a gun after beating his face in, um, threatening a security guard at a shoe store, like flashing a gun on IG Live. You're an NBA player, dude. And this notion that he sought that he sought help and was seek to sought, I don't know, in eight days. Yeah, it's in, in eight days, it is 
is really bad. Like, what is mental health? This is another one of those middle fingers in the air to mental health, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I'm conflicted on this one because I, I believe that I believe that the Grizzlies held him out of two games plus the eight games yep. he was suspended were for a total of ten. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but um, right, I think. So you total of 10. Oh, come on. I see the Air Monarchs. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I'm i okay with the suspension, but to say that, like, John Morant's going to be rehabilitated completely in that time? No, absolutely not. We There's no, there's no way. Now, I understand if they want to continue this rehabilitation treatment throughout, you know, the mm-hmm. offseason and into whenever they feel like he can be a change player. Cause, because – when Ja comes out with that interview, I don't know when it was. That I remember was bad. When he's like, I'm me. I'm always going to be me. I'm Ja. Thank this, you. This is who I am. I'm like, no, this is exactly why you're suspended is because whoever you think you are is not the vibe and not the person you want to be right now. Like, I, I'll never understand this because I guess I'm not part of the culture. Uh, you know, and, and I don't mean that in a racist way, but like, I'll never understand like, I understand, like, when you want to be hood and when you want to be cool. Because, like, I grew up around a lot of people, and I was a little bit of a, like, a, a, a you know. The, the, I've seen your pictures. They're pretty, yeah, you, they're pretty great. So I get the whole, I want to be cool. I want to have have the latest trends and stuff like that. And I had earrings, and I wore the chain ah. and all that stuff. But, you know, as soon as I realized that, like, you know, the world's just not privy to that if you want to advance in life, especially if you want to be a professional basketball player. like Bingo. You're not hood anymore. You're a multimillionaire with, you know, mansions and cars and and, and responsibilities and, you know, investment portfolios and things like that. You're a role model for lack of a better word. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And even in that sense, you, you can be a role model. I, I, you know, that's a whole other bag of worms with role, the role model. Club. But to people, people do look up to you. Right. I just don't know why you want, like. You're not going to earn any street cred by throwing your career away trying to be hard and trying to be a gangster. Like, hard. like it just to me, I don't even know if the kids stay say hard anymore. Like, but, no, they do. No, it's completely hard. It's all yeah. hard. I'm yeah. hard right now. Oh wow. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> I thought I heard something at the desk. Um, yeah. No, I just to me, you're going to be the clown. Like all these guys who are who are around you, they're they're leeches. And all these guys who are, are, you know, all these other people, everyone's looking to take you down. It's sad to see the world we are when people do. I don't care what color you are. When people are successful, the only thing other people care about who don't know you and sometimes who do know you is taking you down. And that's not cool. And you have to learn to rise above it. I mean, LeBron James has haters every single day. I'm a hater. I, I'm not looking to take him down, but I'm, I'm a LeBron. I don't like some of the things LeBron China? Uh, okay, go ahead. Keep going. I don't like some of his thoughts. You know, I don't like some of his things. And, you know, he has every right to say them just as we do. But he has people trying to take him down every day, and he's risen above. He's risen above all of that. He doesn't fuel into that stuff. He, you know, he sometimes puts his foot in his butt, his mouth. But overall, he grew up poor. He could have, you know, he could. He grew up probably with, with some unsavory people as well. But he, you cut those people out of your life as fast as you can, unfortunately. I um to tell you about some of the people he grew up with. This is not even a joke. I've never told the story on air before. Um, this is crazy. I I worked um at a at a at a hospital around here that had like a mental side of things called the Baker Act, and there was one of the girls there who claimed she was a porn star who was in there with her wrist wide open from slicing them right, mm-hmm. and she told I was like you're actually how does this have to do with LeBron? She told me she was from Akron, Ohio, and she knew LeBron. So you're full of crap. No, I'm a famous porn star, so you're still full of crap. I was like, oh, my gosh, she's not lying. <laughs> like, she actually grew up around him, told me things about him. Like, oh, my God, like, you're actually telling the truth here. And she's a porn star who's now a drug addict and cuts her wrist open. So, yeah, LeBron did rise above. I don't think anyone in Akron is like that. But Akron is not the most classiest of towns, so to your point. And John went to a private school. And that's that's the worst part is because it always takes me back to the movie Eight Mile about the guy, you know, the, the, the rapper who was always trying to be a gangster and always wanted you to think he was from the streets. And then finally Eminem's character, you know, learned everything about him. The fact that he was a private school, he had a double parent home and, he, you know, he 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 was tucked in every night. You know, he was a he was, <laughs> he was a classic preppy kid. And 
Yeah, you're right. Ja is kind of the same way. So when you when you when you try to act like you're from the streets, and he's been doing this apparently since he's like 14 years old, like people see right through that. You're not hard. So are you trying extra to be that? And going back to the everything, going back to the returning the lineup, I'm fine with the 10 game. You know, being out for 10 games. But to say that he's rehabilitated, if that's what they're trying to come out with, uh-uh, I don't buy it. I like the off season. Like, I would be okay if he if he did in the off season and he went back to Florida and went back to that center that we don't know existed until now. Yeah, I don't think he should stop. If he's stopping, then they should All be for nothing. They should be worried. Agreed. All right, best fit, most realistic. Let's play this game. Let's do DeAndre Hopkins first, and um, I'll go first here. Well, you okay. go first because he because he, he wants to go to the Patriots. So I actually. Yeah, I think the the most realistic would be New England. I, I feel like Agreed. they would put a, an expensive wide receiver on the books to try to help out Mac Jones before they decide, okay, maybe it's time to move on from him. What did you say? <coughs> oh, me. no! I said I, I feel like the you know putting a 19, 18, 19 million dollar receiver on the books to try to help Mac Jones before they decide, you know, okay, are we moving on from Mac Jones or are we – you know, moving on with Mac Jones here. I think uh, unless there's some sneaky suspicion, I'm hoping DeAndre doesn't fetch a first rounder, which he shouldn't. Um, Go get DeAndre and then make some kind of weird decision on Lamar Jackson. You know what's funny about that is I'm actually, as people know, I'm a Colts fan. How could you tell? This boring behind blue and white jersey we always have. Anyways, um, there's been talks that Lamar Jackson could actually be traded to the Colts. The Colts could be interested. I said, who the heck needs Bryce Young? Who needs the guy? That's all I know. Well, and, and that's the thing. That, and that goes back to this whole collusion and racism thing. Like, oh. everybody wants Lamar Jackson. Really? I, I thought things, it was a white thing. Come on, man. There's two things in the way. And I think people are starting to open up to this. The fact that the, the Ravens can match any order, so you, you, can, you can do all this work for no reason. Yep. The two first round picks is a healthy asking price for a guy who can't stay healthy right now for the and last. He can't year. throw technically. Technically, I, I'd, I'd figure it out. <laughs> right. If I'm, you know, the Colts or whoever, and the and the alleged fully guaranteed contract. I mean, so it's nothing against Lamar Jackson, the athlete. I mean, every other team short of Kansas City would probably kick the tires on this guy, but there's just a lot at stake and. Unfortunately, it makes him undesirable to a lot of teams right now. I mean, look at look how long this Aaron Rodgers New York Jets compensation battle has been going on. Oh, no, oh. Green Bay Packers New York Jets compensation battle. And I mean, Lamar's look- a lot worse because he doesn't have an agent. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, best fit for Hopkins. For, best fit for for him actually to me would be your Indianapolis Colts. Thank you. There is a God. I don't think they'll do it, but I, I pair him alongside Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman, although Michael Pittman might have to be included in the deal. Whatever quarterback ends up there is definitely definitely got the weapons for I'll sure. I'm coming here with a cigar, baby. If they've got D Hop, Alec Pierce, Michael Pittman Jr., and Jonathan Taylor, uh, it's it's a good foundation for any quarterback if they decide to draft Richardson or whoever to to come in and get. I also think the Bills wouldn't be fair. If he went to there with Stephon Diggs, someone said, "Would would they would he be the number one?" I said, "That's a dang good question." I think Stephon would be the number one, just yeah. but D Hop would quickly become an equal for sure. Agreed. But um, I I do my my line here was does it unlock Mac Jones? I'm glad you hit on that point. That's a good point. I mean, you need to give him everything, and I know Bill's always gone the you know the Walmart route versus the, <laughs> the Fifth Avenue route when it comes to guys, except for maybe like Randy Moss and stuff. But yeah, I mean, you got to give Mac Jones this year. you got to give him everything. You, you, you brought in Juju, which is cool, but he's not a number one. You know, if you could bring in D-Hop, D-Hop, Juju, and, and Hunter Henry, I don't hate That'd it. That'd be gorgeous. And the running backs? Come on now. And the defense? Oh, my Lord. Well, they have Ramondre Stevenson. They lost Damian Harris. He went. He signed with the Bills. So that's it'd be, a good uh, It'd be Bills. all up to Mac Jones at that point. Agreed. And I don't think Mac Jones played terrible last year. I, I think a, I don't a lot. Think so. I think he, he could actually run. I was like, oh, my God, the white guy can. What is this? They need an, they need an OC bad, and Matt Patricia ain't it. You sure? <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. Best fit, most realistic, this shirt. No, I'm kidding. Ezekiel Elliott's. Hey, 
Um, so Robert Griffin the third, the wonderful RG3. Um, so RG3 said it would ruin Ezekiel Elliott's Dallas Cowboys legacy if he went to the Eagles. Listen here, Redskins boy, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. And yes, I can say Redskins because he was a Redskin, not a commander. Mm-hmm. You're right. So this guy is stupid. I also think it's funny that, that Zeke wouldn't mind the Bengals because like they love class act running backs, like guys with no baggage. Um, Google Shamaja P running Joe Mixon, but you get it. Um, and also they love tough running. More so for the tough running, obviously, but it's coincidental. Yeah, for me, uh I think that- Bengals. The best fit for him, if they end up with AR-12, is the Jets. That's a good point, too. I think, you know, the, you have Brees Hall, who is definitely the lightning, but he's coming Brees off the cool. three. And this guy, I mean, talking about Ezekiel Elliott, one of the best in this era to do it for a short period. You know, goal line back, you know, inside the 20s, no problem. Mm-hmm. Most- I believe he's going to sign with the Chargers. And I think they're going to trade. I think they're going to trade Austin Eckler. Imagine if Eckler goes to the um, Cowboys with with um Tony Pollard. Nah, Eckler's gonna. Well, Eckler wants to have the. If Eckler wants a workload, though, not more even, power to him because I hope he gets it and screws it up. Well, not even that, but like I don't think they're gonna because they, Eckler wants probably fifteen to twenty million, and they just <laughs> cut Zeke for the same reason. So true. Now Eckler's a better running back right now, but well. I think Zeke ultimately ends up with the Chargers. And if Eckler decides to stay and they somehow, you know, give him a little more money, that's a pretty good tandem as well. Yeah, it's true. They don't have a coach. Um, They got a coach. I don't know. Like, what They just can't. It, it doesn't matter who coaches that team. They just can't seem to get out of their own way. He's good, on the, he's good with against the Chiefs. <laughs> he's good in the first half. That's right. McCall Hart, speaking of um, the Jets, by the way, McCall Hardman, is going to the Jets. That's got to feel good if you're Aaron Rodgers. Because remember, McCole Harmon can never get on the same page. He was supposed to be Tyreek Hill's replacement, but could never be on the same page with Patrick Mahomes. And now they had Kadarius Tony, and that was basically his parting gifts and see you around. Yeah. Um, so he's going to the Jets. I think that's a great move for them. Elijah Moore goes to the Browns. So you got Amari Cooper, Nick Chubb without anybody behind him, assuming Kareem Punt goes somewhere, hopefully an elevator. Oh. And then you've got – I'm sorry. And then you've got um, Deshaun Watson, who I think is going to have a great year. I like these two. I, I think the Jets move for McCall Hardman is great. Uh, yeah, I mean, McCall Hardman, worst case, if he can't get right as a wide receiver, he's a good kick returner. And, you know, he is. You never can have enough of those. Um, I mean, Aaron Rodgers can find a way. I mean, he looks like he'll step into the number two slot behind – um, Alan Lazard at this point. I know that Corey Davis is there, and uh, I'm sorry, Garrett Wilson's there, so he'll probably slide the number three spot, slot receiver. Still, uh, Elijah, a slot. I think this Elijah Moore pick, or this the pick that the Jets got back, the second round pick, is going to be used to trade for Aaron Rodgers. Bold predictions. I, I I honestly think now at this point, because of the stalemate, and because like I think the Jets. The Jets are slowly gaining leverage. The the Packers want first round picks. They're willing to hold out till after the draft, I think. Oh well. I'm thinking we're looking at two seconds, two thirds, with one of those seconds being a conditional first, based on if Aaron Rodgers plays another year or if they make they make a certain they make it when they win a Super Bowl. I don't know what that condition is, but I think two seconds and two thirds is what Aaron Rodgers goes for. Folks, you heard it here first. Aaron Crouch, thanks for joining us on ESPN. Hey, no problem. Whoa! Come here. No I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> are we we haven't even talked about Odell Beckham Jr. either, which is sad. But I don't think we need. Don't Speaking of number twos, <laughs> he is a big number two. Uh, okay. Um, we gotta do get caught up in um something other, something awesome. So we we it's only thirty minutes in. We're good. We're gonna take another break. Yeah. Good show so far. Good show. Great. I'll be back. Before you go, like before you tell, take us in, 
Um, that was a great number two. Okay, go ahead. Just just tell us, tell people again. <laughs> Don't forget, guys, our website, MikeAndAaronDrive.com, our shop, sponsors, socials, and YouTube, aka subscribe, all in one place. Mm -hmm. You can check out fanatics as well while you're there. When you shop for all that sports content, memorabilia, merchandise, and apparel, make sure you use MikeAndAaronDrive.com first and then click that Fanatics link because it helps us out. It doesn't cost you any more, and we appreciate you greatly. Namaste. Um, get caught up in the NBA with Mike. Only took me 28 seconds. I'm kidding. Um, so that was – okay, I need to stop milking that. Tom Brady became a minority owner of the Las Vegas Aces. I know what you're saying. Well, it's just a minority owner. Well, 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 financial people. Mike said it first. Once again, Mike said it first all the time. Mike said it first is gospel and prophecy. The fact is, I told you people this like a few years ago on 12 on Sports, actually, that the WNBA would grow with time. The more exposure it was getting, people were going to say, oh, it's so stupid. Listen, the, the people that watch the NBA probably weren't going to like it I, I, sometimes anyways. But there was going to be a bunch of people that would like it. We just had to filter out all the people. And then I go on Twitter, and all of a sudden there's WNBA, there's WNBA conversations. What, I'm just a simp or whatever. I forgot. I forgot what they called me. A lot of things. That was one of the nicer terms, actually. But good for Tom Brady. I'm I, never saying that again. I think the question is, I mean, we're almost 30 years into the WNBA. When's it going to grow? Now. Okay. I hope you're right. I mean, I'm not rooting the against The time it. is now. I'm rooting like against crypto, except it doesn't crash. <laughs> hope you're right. I'm, I do too. Um, Paul George fell awkwardly late on Monday. I believe it was Monday night. It might have been Tuesday night versus OKC. It will be reevaluated in two to three weeks. It was a non-contact injury. Him and Lou Dort were going out for the for the ball off the rebound, off a fast break, and then ugh, that was gross. Um, he he his kneecaps are always good to him. I've noticed he's got bionic knees, but I, I people are saying it could be longer than three weeks. Um, Warriors won two road games in a row, including one that attention addict, um, and Adderall, no, attention addict Mark Cuban, um, is protesting, saying that was the worst call in NBA history. You're talking about in the third quarter, this is bizarre. I don't know if you've seen the video, but it's, it's, it's insane where the, the Warriors, the Mavericks thought they had the ball. The officials apparently signaled it was the Warriors ball. So the Mavs were the entire end of the other court, on the other side of the court, and Warriors inbound the ball like from like behind the basket, and Kavon Looney gets a wide open dunk with no one within a mile of him. And then guess what the Mavs lose by? Pat number two. That he has the points, and I did not know this, but in 2008, that was the last successful protest. It's a good protest now. Because with this loss, the Mavericks dropped to ninth. The Warriors moved up to sixth, just so six nine, to show you how close and tight. God, this is horrible. I'm sorry, I'm making too many references. How hard and tight and close this is in the Western Conference. Your description of this is number two. <laughs> we, we talk hockey. Good God. <laughs> All right, let's get caught up here in the world of hockey. First and foremost. Connor McJesus gets goal number 60. Now you say, oh, what's the big deal? Austin Matthews did that last year. Yeah, Matthews finished with 60 goals. Connor McDavid has 60 goals in one less game than Austin Matthews, and he still has 11 games left. Oh. Uh, what is he, the record for goals? 90, 92. Wayne oh, gross. Is he going to catch 92? No, but Connor McDavid, again, just doing the greatest player in my era by far. Right. Uh, and I'm a Sidney Crosby guy. Uh, bad news for Vegas fans. Logan Thompson, who just returned from injury, is injured again. He injured oh. himself in the win against Calgary. Uh, no timetable for that right now, but uh, they need him for the playoffs because the the band of misfits that else that other the other guys that play goal is is just it's not good. So uh, Carolina, the Hurricanes become the second team in the NHL this season to clinch a playoff berth. They are Lynch. now. Uh, of course, those Boston Bruins were first because they clinched it like a year ago, <laughs> it feels like. Right. Uh, and then, of course, the last thing I have here is not from the world of the NHL, but Russian and Belarus hockey teams are now banned by the IIHF 
uh, for international competition, will, which will include the World Cup of Hockey. And if you didn't know, yes, that has existed before. That's not a new thing. The Hockey World Cup, these two countries are banned due to their involvement with the invasion of Ukraine. And that's uh, it. <laughs> okay, so, so I mean, let me get canceled real quick. I don't know if they still do that. But anyways, um, I'm not one to advocate any kind of politics. I also am not one to say Russia should have done what they did because I'm not saying that. Right. But can we keep – why do sports do this? That's not that's not fair. Did those athletes invade Ukraine? Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they did. Uh, that's not fair to Alex Ovechkin. That's not fair. Is he Russian? He is, yes. Yeah, okay. I just, that's not fair. Like, you're not going to see Alex Ovechkin because he invaded Ukraine? I don't remember seeing him over there. God, maybe I'm wrong. I think Alex Ovechkin needs to pull the Randy or Rosarina and get some American citizenship, if he doesn't have it already, and play for the U.S. He probably does. Did you hear the story about a Rosarina, the baseball guy? No. I mean, I, I, I've heard it, but I don't think I know what so happened. He regularly, but he's, uh, he's, he's Cuban. He's a he's of Cuban descent, and Me he too. actually uh, defected from Cuba to to America, and didn't want to play for the Cuban team. So he went to the Russian president and asked him to make him a Mexican, uh, not Russian, Mexican president, and asked him to make him a Mexican citizen so he could play for Mexico. And he balled out this year. This 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 series too. I don't think Putin would have done that since you said Russian. No, I, I, it's pretty and slip, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. This is tough because I, I look at it like. You know, when the U.S. was invading Vietnam and when the U.S. was invading Korea, like, were we held out of Olympic competition? No. And he was alive, so he remembers. <laughs> I think I was I think I was in grade school when that happened, yeah. Am I at the, am I at the point in my life where I'm going to start getting those jokes like that I tell old people? Like, when, when some people, somebody mentions, like, they're old or, you know, like, I'm always like, yeah, yeah, what was Jesus like in school, you know? <laughs> Am I gonna start get? Am I gonna start being the butt of those jokes? Like, was he an A plus student? Because that's not perfect, you know. Yeah, I'd be like, didn't you teach Moses how to drive? <laughs> <laughs> the ark, the boat that he, you know, that's oh, that's Noah. You know, it's funny. How about Moses? Have you heard the Moses and Noah <laughs> driving the ark? <laughs> I have not heard that one. <laughs> it's like, um, like something about like how many animals did Moses fit into the ark? And it's like it, he didn't have the ark. It was Noah. Or some it was something funny like that. Oh, okay. I just Fair. made the Moses confusion again, and that's why that came up in my head. So anyway. Let's do some drafting. You don't want to talk about religion and politics? Come on, man. No, my two least favorite things. What are we drafting today? It's your, it's your idea. So today's Fantasy uh, fantasy Draft Friday is the our all-time NBA starting five of players drafted 2,000 or later. The Gen Z, the millennial, the end of the millennial Gen Z era here. of all Post these Aaron. Yeah, the Aaron, well, the... the, the Before our common Aaron. This was my wheelhouse, but I will say this. I, no, I don't want to give away my drafting strategy, but um, I will say this. These are some of the guys that I watched, so my team might be pretty good because this 2000 to 2011 era, I was watching the NBA a lot more than I am now. That's fair. So since I had the first pick last week in our draft... I, I get LeBron James. Okay, now your turn. Yeah, I was going to say, you better take him. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm actually taking a guy who I probably haven't watched as much, but I know he's one of the greatest. And I'm taking Giannis at my power spot. I like it. Um, So I'm going to go with um, a guy. I'm going to try this one first because I feel like you're going to take him. You got to fill your positions too. Don't forget. Oh, I'm LeBron's in my small forward. I was going to put him at point guard. I had another little lineup. I was going to get on that. Yeah, I, put, I, yeah. I was I was gonna get cute with with the positions. Yeah, I'm I good, put the four there. So yeah, I got LeBron the three. Um, speaking of threes, there are three guys that did not make are not gonna make my list because like they're numbers 11, 12, and thirteen, but they almost did. Chris Bosh, Kyrie Irving, just kidding, and um JJ Redick. JJ Redick was close to making my list, but I saw you know come on. I want yeah. a shooter. I, I was thinking about that at the two. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't. Okay, so I'm gonna go with um. Oh, I don't even know. I'm gonna go with Dwight Howard at my center. Oh, that was what? my guy. <laughs> that was not your guy. You bailed on him. 
I didn't bail. Well, I'm saying that was the guy I was going to pick at center. He I bailed was, on you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, then at my three, I'm going to take Kevin Durant. Should have done a point guard because I already have my three. You got to do strategy, sir. I understand. I guess you got Kevin Durant. That's cool, though. You put Kevin Durant at your four. like So you could have still drafted him. That's fair. And he would have been a nice stretch four. Um, so I'm going to go with, um, I really want one guy, but I'm going to have to go with this one instead. I'm building, um, I'm building chemistry here. Dwayne Wade. Oh, my shooting card. What? Hey, oh my God. How? I was Dwayne Wade was my next pick. <laughs> Who was your backup shooting guard? Uh, well, you'll find out when I draft him. That's fair. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I'm going to take, since you've got, you don't have a point guard yet. I'm going to take Steph. Easy. It wasn't on my list. Good. I'm gonna take this is this one's hard. This one is tough because uh, I'm gonna go with Anthony Davis of the four. He was my backup four after Giannis. So that's fair. Um Shooting guards, you got Dwayne Wade, so that one's wide open. Actually, both of my positions, you've already drafted a guy, so uh, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna, ugh, I don't know if I want. I'm gonna take James Harden at the two. You know, I'm not gonna lie; he was actually close on my list as well. My final pick is actually gonna be. Oh God, I, I, I don't want to leave this guy off because he's been such a good playoff performer. But I'm gonna leave off Luca. And because this guy is going to mesh well with Dwayne Wade, LeBron, AD, and Dwight Howard. You're taking. Chris Paul. Yep, I knew you were taking. I wanted Luka. I wanted Luka, but I can't do that to that team. He was my backup one. It was Chris Paul. Damian Lillard was my backup shooting guard. So I I have a center left for the fifth pick, and I'm torn between Jokic and Embiid. And, and And we're just assuming health at this point, right? Of course, yeah. You're just assuming when they're on the field or when they're on the court. And they played a, a more than you know some guys have. Like they played more than Greg Oden. <laughs> I mean, I've got four guys that don't really facilitate, so I might take my center to facilitate to these all four guys. I'm gonna take Jokic. So you got Jokic, Durant, Giannis. The two yep. is your. T- I got Curry, Harden, Durant, Giannis, and Jokic. You know your Jokic pick might have. Say- Bashy was pretty good at the last pick. Uh, you know, I mean, you took Dwight. I think Dwight was the greatest of this era for the time he was good. But you know, nope. he just he just was in a three point contest in Japan or in Taiwan. I mean, was he really? <laughs> and he also was a, was I believe judging the dunk contest. Yes, I did hear about him judging the Taiwanese but dunk. He had contest. like I think like fifteen or something like that. And like he had like twelve or something like that three pointers. I think it was like more than Kevin Herter hit this year. It's more than he's hit in his career, probably. Well, I know he's been trying him. Like at the end of Lakers games, he would do it. But dude, Dwight Howard is so good. Like the dude, I don't want to say single handedly because that's not fair. But no, no one ever talked about him dragging the match. We talked about LeBron dragging the Cavs. I know they had Hero Turkoglu. What Jameer Nelson probably at that point. They had Jameer Nelson. They had Rashard Lewis. He didn't. He didn't. They were good players for like yeah. two years. But Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard was one of the most incredible players I've seen in an era that I watched some hardcore basketball. And then they, they beat the Cavs that year, too, to get there? Yeah. I mean, he beat LeBron James. And then he helped him win a title in L.A. with the bubble. That's insane to me. No one talks about that. I'll tell you a name that no one ever talks about that actually shut down LeBron James and will never get the credit for it in that specific year. Actually, two years. Uh, because they beat LeBron James the year before, but didn't get to the finals. Michael Petrus. You, you may remember Bucks, that name. right? Huh? Bucks? No, he played for the Magic. He played for a few teams. He might have played for tall, the what, what? How tall was he? He was probably six, 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 seven. But he was long and like he looked kind of weird, like super Very black. No, he, that, being super black is not weird. I'm saying he was like long and like a weird shaped head or whatever. Yeah, he was a French guy, but he I think he was from Cameroon or something like that. I remember seeing him, yeah, very vaguely. He shut down LeBron for two straight years. And I, when I say shut down LeBron, I think LeBron still averaged like 23. But, in, but, but inefficient 23, though, to be fair. Right. So, 
Yeah, that's a name that nobody will will talk about. One of my favorite players from those Magic teams was Michael Petrus and Rafer Halston. Oh, wow. I thought it was rougher, but you know better than that. It was Rafer? That's what – he never corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> and you interviewed Dwight Howard? A couple or times. Were, was he nice to you, man? Yeah. I mean, he wasn't – I, he never really spoke directly to me. When you interview somebody, there's usually you're all like right there with the thing. There's usually three or four guys around, and you yeah. may get a question in, and he'll look at you while you answer. He answers your question, so I guess you could say he, he talked to me, but I, not really. He knew of you, but he didn't know your name. I wouldn't even say he knew of me. If like if if we weren't in the locker room and he walked by me, he wouldn't know who I was. You know? I mean, I worked you're for tall, dude. Come on, man. I know you're trying to hype me up here, but I'm just being real. <laughs> I'm gassing you, bro. I'm like, I'm like Larry McTunstall, except you know, with with air and not masks. I'm I'm the anti John Morant. I don't need the cred. <laughs> you sh- oh man, hey, there's a party in my street. Go ahead and take us home. Yeah, actually, I would say my claim. I I interviewed Dwayne Wade and LeBron and the what? As that was cooler to me than 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 Dwight than talking to Dwight Howard. No offense. Actually, AJ Reddick was on those teams too. He was actually kind of a dick. Back then, he's humbled out now. He still seems like, like that, but I, I love I love his show and what he does for ESPN. Yeah, yeah, JJ JJ was JJ was that that bratty kid who wasn't JJ getting... Red Dick. You mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's only one D, but it's funny. Uh, JJ got a bad rap because Van Gundy, for whatever, just hated him and wouldn't play him back then. And now they got to do broadcast together on ESPN. No, I Dude. lied. Van Gundy's on TNT. I'm dumb. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm talking about Stan, not Jeff. No, I know. I know. Stan's on TNT, and that's what you're talking about. But Jeff is on ESPN. That doesn't count. Yeah. So, anyways, that's gonna do it for us. We're gonna have those fantasy draft Friday lists out for you to vote on. Please make sure you engage with us on the Twitter. Uh, I made the graphic for last week. Finally, <laughs> check out the website right there under Mike Mike and Aaron Drive dot com. Of course, all of our shops, sponsors, socials, and YouTube are there, which is where you can catch the show. So until Monday. We will see you. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the sports. Enjoy the talk. Dry, uh, be safe. And, of course, as always, Mike. Eat pizza. No kidding. Drive safe. Eat pizza. Not at the same time, but as driving. <laughs> Enjoy your weekend.